and start out by talking about materials that you're going to need for this project. Titanium white oil paint, either black or I'm using raw umber here. 11 by 14 gessoed panel, got that right down here. Three brushes. Uh, this brush is pretty big. It's a let's see, number 12 filbert. This thing's pretty expensive. Number 8 filbert, Windsor Newton, and I think this is another number 8. Those are the brushes I'm going to use. I may, as I'm working, pick another one or two, but I'm going to use fairly large brushes to do this tone sketch. Palette knife. Palette. Here it is. I just pulled my palette out of the freezer. Uh, if you want a little tip, if you want to save your paint overnight, you can put the oil paint in a container or just put the whole palette in a freezer and it preserves the paint a little longer so it doesn't dry out. Then you just don't have to use as much paint in the future and you save a little bit of money. Paper towel and there's my uh, rag and newsprint scraps in place of paper towel to clean my brushes and clean the palette, etc. Soap. And then you can see the computer over here. I'm actually not going to use the computer for this project. I have a full-size color printout of this Hiroshige print, which I'm going to work on. And I will go to the next step here. So before we begin painting, I'm going to need to tone this panel with a acrylic neutral gray. You can either mix this with black and white acrylic paint, black acrylic paint mixed with gesso, or you can do it with oil paint. I have bought this golden artist color neutral gray set, so I have all of them here. I am just picking this N7, uh, so on the value scale, that's uh, number seven right there. It is fairly light, but sort of in the middle. And I'm just looking at this print and kind of picking N7 as the background tone for the sky. And also this tube of paint uh, got busted, so I need to use it before it wastes away. So let me just show you, I have a pretty big brush here and I'm just going to tone this. Acrylic paint dries fairly quickly so within 30 minutes I can get started on the actual painting. Let's get a little bit more paint in here. Um, let me put this on time lapse so you don't have to. All right, so my surface here is dry, and welcome back. I am getting ready to start. Here's my printout. I'm just working at an easel. If you're using the computer as a reference, then you're going to have to set up a different workstation, obviously, than I have but just try to get it set up so that it's easy for you to work and you have a flat surface that's fairly vertical for you to look at. I have my toned. This is a, again, I picked number seven here on the tone scale, on the value scale, because it kind of feels like the background. It's maybe a cloudy day, something like that. So it's going to serve me well in this tone sketch so I don't have to do extra work. Um, I've got my fairly big brushes here where I'm going to paint in the large flat areas of tone. And I have a little bit of medium. If you're just using water mixable oil paint, there's different types of mediums for that, but you can just use water as well. 
This is a uh, Chelsea Classical Studio Lean Medium. It's pretty good. It's got linseed oil and a bit of the lavender solvent mixed together. I think it's 50-50 ratio, something like that. And then my palette down here from the value scale last time, as you can see, it has the pre-mixed tones in there that I just took out of the freezer so the paint is all ready to use. I'm not going to use all eight tones, obviously, or all ten tones, including the white and the black. I'm going to create a plan here and select the groups of tones that I want to work. This is a concept that I want you to start thinking about early on is how you're going to group the tones of any composition and we're just doing a master study here so you can get the basic idea. Um, I'm going to group these two together at the beginning and group most of these darks as uh, one mass. I'm not going to look at all this tiny details within that at the beginning but I'm going to mass in the big groups together and work out from there. Um, before I do that, I'm going to block in the major angles and proportions of drawing and then we can get started. I'm going to go ahead and just do that with a piece of charcoal. Um, one last thing that I was going to mention, I'm just working site size here again, just like we did with the barred copies, but uh, if you're working from the computer, you're obviously going to have to blow it up a little bit, but I want you to use the exact same proportion within the panel, so you're going to have to mark it off. This proportion here to here, uh, left to right, and then up and down is not going to be the exact same as your 11 by 14 inch panel. So create the rectangle within that that's the same proportion as the original that you're working from. Mine happened to be nine inches wide by 12 and a half inches tall. So I'm working within that nine by 12 and a half inch window. I could blow it up a little bit to keep the same proportion and still fit within this, but I'm just using those nice easy numbers. And let me put this on time lapse and block in the major angles and areas that I want to uh, emphasize before I begin painting. Alright, so I have the main proportions blocked in, just did this by eye, getting all the main relationships that I see. For example, uh, the edge of this tree kind of coming through, hitting this front of this rock. Overall, the edge of this point is almost exactly halfway. This kind of rhythm runs from the boat into this rock, and then curves over again. I'm following these large rhythms kind of leads me in here, slips up, comes over, over again, this one coming up that way, arcing down, these little limbs kind of gently leading me over to these people. I'm kind of trying to find those big compositional things, get familiar with the movement. Um, gonna use this big brush and block in. I created a bit of a plan that I'm going to group all of these darks into one mass. I know there's different tones in there, but I'm gonna start off just grouping the darks into one mass, and then the lights I will keep as this N7, which is the um, value of the, um, the value of the undertone. Before I jump up there, I'm just making a last minute decision. I'm actually going to bump this up to uh, value number three. I'm going to paint all the darks in a number three, and then I will place the accents at the number two. I'm going to avoid using black because it's a bit too dark. So I'm going to use my largest brush 
I'm getting a touch of medium. I must have a little jar here. I'm dipping a little bit in there so I can freely move the paint around. But if you have uh, the water mixable oils, just get enough so that you can, I'm, I'm holding the brush, not like a drawing pencil, but swing my arm. Ideally, if we had the a little bit more of the money and the time, you do these studies, the tone sketches of these Japanese paintings. You can do them small and there's lots of things you can learn from that, but also when you do them large, like two or three feet, you can really get the swing of your arm and the motion of the brush that is uh, hard to do on the small scale. On the small scale like this, or even smaller, like a four by six postcard, or a, index card or postcard size you really you more just working on the tone groupings and the I'm connecting this one over to here I missed that uh, the bottom of that edge if you need to erase sometimes you can take a rag and scratch out some things I just want to emphasize the the horizontal angle of that um, and I'm gonna group all of this I'm not gonna talk through everything I'm just gonna put this on time-lapse and let you see how this starts moving along and uh, take it from there All right, so I'm fairly close to being done and I'm just gonna run through again to repeat some of the main key concepts that we're learning in here. So tone grouping, that's pretty much one of the most important things. I'm gonna get my value scale here and uh, we're gonna go again and start talking about these groups. Um, at the beginning, I laid in all of the darks right around at this value to give me a base to work from so I could deepen my darks into this range. I actually didn't use any of the black. Try to avoid using pitch black on some of these studies and see if you can get the depth and the feeling of black without even using black. So I'm using near black for my darkest darks and my brightest bright, I'm using uh, pretty close to white, way up here. So my bright accents, these uh, two faces, or those three faces, and then this stamp up here. I definitely painted these in because they're compositional tools to help balance these figures out. Um, you're trying to learn a little bit more about composition, following some of these tone groups as they transition into one another. This little embankment here was an interesting passage to paint for me where I was learning about the way that these rocks were stacked and overlapping the embankment and also how the tone was gently, gradually moving up to the middle key right at this uh, stamp and this little green patch of grass. That was, uh, that was a nice moment when I started figuring that out and then this middle tone dropped back down. So it was a, a play of reducing and increasing a transition and a contrast that um, again plays out in the water here and on the edges of the sky, on the edge of that transition. It was uh, you're just trying to learn and see what you can discover about the composition and what the original artist was thinking as they were putting some of these marks and movements together. Uh, some of the other things about the um, brush management that I was learning personally would be uh, how I could do this a little bit more simply and effectively. How could I put the layers of paint in a way that I could use less marks, 
more gracefulness, more effectiveness, with uh, less work and less effort, but more uh, truth. How could I layer some of the marks in this front area after I do some of the background so that they jump forward perhaps? How could I more gracefully put these gr branches in, perhaps with a longer brush? I know you saw me uh, pulling out that tiny brush, but I did paint almost the entire painting with these three brushes. I would kind of group them into masses. I would say, here's my dark brush, and I kind of kept that for most of the painting. That was uh, either, either this value or this value I would use with this brush. And then my middle brush was uh, this one. I was, I was mostly doing uh, number fives with this brush, where I'd try to get some of these accents, and I'd just switch brushes. And then I'll paint my lights in with this brush. So I was just trying to keep that organization. Dark, middle, light brush. And then within those ranges, within the dark, middle, and light, where is the tone moving even darker? And where is the tone moving even lighter? So uh, you're just trying to follow and think about some of these tone patterns tone transitions, tone groups, tone relationships, so you can get a handle on how to order this. So it's not just a random photographic copying. And uh, I think I will leave you there. This could use more work, but what would probably be better practice is just to redo it again and use the principles that I learned in the first one about some of the brush uh, application. And then now that the tones are pretty solid in my head, uh, redo it again and try to focus on those layers. If you want to take it to another level, uh, you would get to the point where you could try to do these from memory. And if you want to um, take it to another level after that, um, redo these where you're changing the tone relationships. You're not just copying the tones that you're seeing and the relationships that this artist made, but perhaps reversing them playing in a different key. What if it was nighttime? How do you keep the same drawing? Where would you move some of these things around? So there's a lot of possibilities with these studies that it's not just a one for one copy. And I'm just uh, gonna leave you there and uh, see you in the next video.